Okay, guys, in the previous one, it was y equals a to the x, right? And we have to study your original y values, and then we have to solve for a. In this case, they've given you a log graph, all right? The equation of the log graph. And now you must find a each time. So I just rewrite that equation as was the same one every time. Now, again, you just have to study your x and y values, but in this case, guys, you don't actually know how to solve that equation, all right? And you don't have to know how to solve that equation. It's not actually in the syllabus solving log equations. So when you are getting this is basically a log equation, right? It's an equation with a log. You have to take that and rewrite it in exponential form and then solve that equation. All right. So what you would do, because I think in class we practiced going from exponential form to log, log form, but not actually the other way around. Okay, so I hope you guys were able to do that. But basically, what I always say to myself is the base of the log is the base of the exponent, right? And remember when we did, let me just show you guys the picture here. When we did going from exponential form to log form, we said that the exponent becomes the subject, right? So now when we're going the other way around, the subject in log form has to become the exponent in the exponent. Okay, so that's the other thing that you would have to remember. So from there, the subject here in the log equation is the exponent in exponential form. Okay, and then obviously the other number is the same. So yeah, I'm not sure if you guys were able to do that on your own, but yeah, that's basically what you would do. And in this case, it was very easy. A to the one is true, so A is obviously true. You didn't actually even have to rewrite that. You just left your answer as A is true from there. Now for B. Yeah, Kanye was asking, isn't it plus or minus three? Now, guys, when you are trying to think now, you actually can't have a negative number in that value, but you're not really supposed to know that because you don't have to do the long rule. Um, guys, with exponential equations, maybe we must just remember that if it's an a squared, then you do a plus minus. I think they won't put questions like this in the exam because it's not technically in the syllabus. That you have to know that this number can't be negative. Okay, so we'll just leave it like that for now. Okay, I hope that's fine. The whole log thing is a bit iffy because then we're going to slip. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll just, just leave it like that for now. Maybe I'll just check also with Mrs. Bender what she just did in this case. I'll just make a note. Not that, so I will repeat back to my on that one. Okay, let's just look at the other ones. You can just take a look and see if you were able to solve those other ones. Each time you have to do the same thing, so I'm in the point, convert it to exponential form and then solve. <clears throat> I'm not getting any questions on any of those. E to E, or oh, sorry, E to X. All right, then number two, they gave you the equation y equals log base three of x. So you can see I just made a note here on the side. I will discuss that now. That's something that we need to discuss when this value is negative. But they just asked you to find the new equations when you are reflecting. So if you're reflecting about the x axis, we know that y becomes negative. And guys, you don't have to write this down. Okay, you won't get a mark for doing this. It's just a way of remembering what you must actually do. So when you reflect about the x-axis, y becomes negative. So just the y becomes negative, and then you must just move that minus over to the other side. Then for B, when you are reflecting about the y-axis, we know that x becomes negative, right? So I think we're all fine with this part. Right, it was y equals log base 3 of x, it's now just log base 3 of negative x. Right, is that fine? <coughs> and guys, what I wrote, <coughs> sorry, sure, what I wrote here on the side is saying that this equation can only work if your x value, right, is actually negative. What are you going to get if you have a negative times a negative? A positive, okay? 
So what I wrote here at the bottom was just saying that this value actually can't be negative. All right, so you can never have a negative number over here. If you just want to check on the calculator, we say, for example, log base three of negative two, you say math error. All right, if you do any negative number there, negative 10, it will always say math error. You can change that to negative 65, it will say math error. Okay, so whenever you have a negative number in that value, it comes up as a math error, and this is why. So what I did here was I just wrote this log equation, log, yeah, log equation in exponential form. So the base becomes the base, the subject becomes the exponent, and then the other numbers on the other side. Now guys, could you ever find a y and an x value that would make this true? Okay, three to the power of anything can that be equal to a negative number? Three to the power of the positive number or always give you a positive number, right? And what if you have three to the power of a negative number? What will that give you? A fraction, all right? But still a positive fraction. All right, so this equation actually has no solution. All right, that's why it comes up as a math error. It's this value is negative. So I wrote there, there is no way that this equation can ever be true. Maybe I should just say three to the power of a positive will give you a positive. Right, and three to the power of a negative will give you a fraction. So you can't say three to the power of math and we'll be able to give you an actual negative number. <clears throat> so that's just something that you guys are going to have to remember, please. That this number can't be negative. So if you have a negative x in your actual equation, like you did in this case, you have to say that x must actually be a negative number there. All right, because if you have a negative and a negative number, that will make that a positive value. Okay, so this is an extra thing that you will have to add, guys. So this will be a two more question, one and two. Okay. <clears throat> Are there any questions on that? I hope that makes sense. All right, so please just try and remember that that number can't be negative. And it usually only comes up in a question like this when they ask you to reflect it in the y axis and your x is negative, and then all you have to do is just remember that you must say that x is being a negative. Okay, for C, they say now you must reflect this about the line y equals x, and we know that when you do that, you get the inverse, right? So xy becomes yx. So what you could have done, the original equation was this. So you can just swap your x and your y, right? So you can say that now x is log base three of y. And then you can convert that to exponential form. Or remember I told you the other day, you can just remember that a log and an exponential graph will always be inverse of each other. So if the log graph has a base of three, the exponential graph will also have a base of three. You can write that equation straight away. <laughs> So you would say that the base of the log becomes the base of the exponent, the subject becomes the exponent, and then the y will be on the side. And was that but all you have to do? Shall we do now with you guys? <clears throat> Oh, oh, that's actually an important yes. one. Sorry. No. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, my blue pen has run out of ink, so I'm going to have to use this one. Weird. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so they gave you three graphs, right? Do you guys notice that? We have this graph x. We have g. You now, guys, I'm hoping that you guys can see that x and g are inverses of each other, right? It looks like they are. Do you agree? 
right? F is here, remember, an inverse is a reflection in the line y equals x. So it does look like if I were to draw y equals x in there, that F and G would just be reflections of each other. And then H looks like a reflection of F in the y axis. Okay, can you see that? So this is F. Then we're flipping it over the y axis to get H. Okay, I am guessing that they're saying that. Right, I want to be saying for three A. Find A is the graph of the function f of x, and now they're telling us that the equation is a to the power of x passes through the point two and nine over three. Okay, so we have done questions like this already. So I'll just do this one with you. So you're going to say a to the power of x is now a squared is equal to y, which is 9 over 4. Right, now, if we are looking, this is now again that whole plus minus business. Right, if we're looking at the graph of x, can a be negative? What happens if you have a negative a value? Let's just think again quickly, what is the actual um, sum form of an exponential graph? Do we remember this? Now the A that they use that they used here is actually the B in this equation. All right? Can you see that? So they just say A to the power of X. So whatever the variable is or the number here to the power of X. But in the standard form, that is actually B. Now guys, I hope that you can remember from last year that B actually can't be negative. Right, the number that you are relating to the power of x can't be negative. If you have a negative function, then it's actually this value that's negative. Right, so like a negative one, and then you have your two or your three or your third, whatever. So the value that you are relating to the power of x, so in this case, the a value actually can't be negative in an exponential function graph. Right, so let's just make a note there. Negative. Yeah, so we haven't, I haven't denied you guys of that, but that is what we get. So that number that you are actually raising to the power of x can't be negative. <laughs> yeah, I don't know who was first. All right, Nina? Um, B can't be negative. Yes, the actual base. Yes. So, guys, if you have an equation y equals negative 3 to the power of x, right, that actually is saying that a is negative 1, b is 3. Right, so the b value can't actually be a negative value. If it's a negative graph, one that is below the y axis, then it's actually an h star variable. Right, usually with these um, inverse graphs, they don't. Put, they don't make the exponential graph so complicated. It's normally something quite simple. Okay, so that's for this. Just as a reminder, let's write here what is a going to be if a squared is 9 over 4? 3 over 2. All right, so let's do it like this. Let's say a is plus or minus 3 over 2. All right, let's solve it properly. But a is positive, All right? A has to be positive. And now I'm just going to say A is actually B in this case, All right? There's no separate value here. We're just using a different variable from what we used to. So therefore, in this case, A is just positive 3 over 2. Okay, so we solve the equation properly. And then we say in this context, okay, the context of the exponential graph, this value that you are raising to the power of x can't be negative, it has to be positive, so they go to the positive part. Okay, does that make sense? So there are lots of little things that we need to remember. Okay. <clears throat> All right, B. <clears throat> Determine the equation defining G if and this is what they're telling us, if to the negative one x is equal to g of x. Now, what does that mean, guys? They're telling us that G is the inverse of X. All right, that's what they say. G 
is the inverse of x. And that's what they're telling us, guys. They're doing that. So we could see it on the graph, but now we're just telling us that it is correct. All right, so if f, let's just quickly write that equation down because we found a, but we don't have the actual equation. If it's 3 over 2 to the power of x, right? a to the power of x. So now when we're finding g, which is the inverse, we need to swap x and y. So this is y equals 3 over 2 to the x. So the inverse is going to be x equals 3 over 2 to the y. Right, but we're not allowed to leave it like that. We have to say y equals. So in order to make the exponent the subject, remember we use log. So we're going to say y is equal to log. What's the base of the exponent? Mm -hmm. Three over two. So the base of the log becomes three over two, and then we put the x. Right, but guys, like I said, you can just remember that these two will be inverses. Okay, so you can just say, okay, if the original graph is y equals 3 over 2 to the x, the inverse will be y equals log base 3 over 2 x. You can just go straight from that to that. Okay, so we won't use a mark for not going to this slide. Okay, C. Determine the equation defining h. If h is, let me write this out, h is symmetrical. To it above the y axis. Now, if something is symmetrical to another graph above the y axis, does it make sense that it's been reflected above the y axis or in the y axis? All right, so what happens when you do that? When you reflect something in the y axis, the sign of x changes, right? It's always the other one that changes the sign. So x is going to become negative x. And they're saying it's the reflection of x. So we need to go back. It was this. Okay, so f of x, I'll just write it out again. f of x was 3 over 2, 3 over 2 to the x. So now if x change the sign, it's just going to become negative. All right. So we're going to say it's not h. h of x is going to be 3 over 2 is a negative x. But can we leave it like that for the negative exponent? Uh, so how do we change that negative exponent to a positive exponent? Flip the fraction. Good. So that is going to become 2 over 3 to the power of x. Okay, so guys, these types of questions are quite common. All right, so you have to find the a value by somehow solving the exponential equation like we did in the first one. Then they're asking you often for the equation of the inverse, the equation of some reflections. And now indeed, they're asking for the domain and range of all three of them. Okay, so let's start with the original graph, f of x. <coughs> I'll just show you the graph quickly. F is this one, right? What do we think the domain of this graph is? This is an element of real values, real numbers, right? Because it's going to be negative infinity to positive infinity on that side. Okay, so the domain is x, e, r. And the range. The range is all y values, right? We're looking at this one. What do we think? Y must be greater than zero. Good. Yeah. Y greater than zero. Y is on. Remember, we can't say greater than or equal to zero because zero is an asymptote. So we have to just say greater than. All right. I'm going to do G next to it because G was actually the inverse of this graph. So the domain and range are just going to swap around. So the original graph had a range of y greater than zero, so the inverse has to have a domain of x greater than zero. 
Uh, but to forget that, you can also just look at the graphs, all right? They get actually gave you the graph in the case, so you could use that. If the domain of the original is x e r, the range of the inverse is going to be y e r. Okay, what are you that? Then the last one was h of x. This is actually going to be the same as it, both of them. So I'll just show you guys on the graph. H was just it reflected like that, right? So the like domain stays the same. So looking at H over here, it was H. H, that's still X E R to the domain, and still Y greater than zero for the range. But what if we have the reflection of it in the X axis? Right? If this is A, if we reflect that in the X axis, it would look like that, right? Would that still have the same range then? What would the range of this graph be? Y would be less than zero. Okay, so we just have to look at the graph there. Okay, but in this case, it is the same. So X is an element of real numbers and Y greater than zero. Y is an element of real numbers. Okay, are there any questions here, guys? I copied a worksheet here about where did I put it? Okay, guys, I am not sure about where I put those worksheets and I look for them now, but I'll put it on the board so long. Um, <clears throat> Okay, guys, I just want to show you the page. If you're going to the if you're going to the great Google Classroom and you go to class work, then if you go down to functions, inverses, and logarithms, if you're looking at this first bit, mixed graphs exercises. These are the types of questions I will just I have to replace this, but these are the types of questions that you will have to be able to do in your exams. Okay, where they're actually mixing all the different graphs together. And to save this, we need this now. Okay, 12. Okay, so I don't actually want you guys to do the first ones, but I just want to show you how many questions there actually are here. These are all from past November exams. Okay, and you can obviously look online for even more if you want to take a look. Sometimes these graph questions include calculus, which we haven't done yet. Okay, so if you're seeing anything that looks like completely strange, um, especially if they do like an A for the dash. All right, so we're doing x with a negative one, that means the inverse. But if, let me see quickly if I can find one here. Uh, so over there, in this question, where they're saying f of x times g dash x, that is the derivative. So we're still going to do that in calculus. Okay, so whenever you're seeing a function with a dash there, you can't do that yet. All right, don't stress. It's not that you've forgotten anything, we just haven't done it yet. All right, but there are loads of questions here. A and B, I'm not going to give you guys to do now, but I would like you to work on the second page, which is the page that I copied. It must be here somewhere. I'll look for it now. All right, but you can just start working on C for now. So they're saying, and this was from the November 2016 paper. So you can find more recent ones online. If you just Google, they are online. So they're giving you two equations. Which types of equations are we working with here, guys? This is a straight line, right? Negative x plus three. And this is a log graph now, okay? So they haven't actually given us the exponential graph. They've given us now the equation of the log graph. They're asking us to draw these two graphs on the same set of axes. Okay, now guys, if you are not comfortable with working with the log graph, what would the inverse of this graph 
Okay. An exponential graph, and what would the equation of that graph be? If the log is log base two, the exponential one is going to be two things, right? All right, that would be the inverse of that graph. So you are allowed to, instead of us trying to do that, so what values are trying to do when you're trying to do the log line, build that log graph? You can actually plot the exponential of this graph and just plot them around. Okay, that's what my class last year preferred to do, my AC6. So it's, it's quite a nice thing to do. All right, so what we're going to do is say, this is not an A equal zero, A equal negative one, A equal one. We have three points and it's half an hour. Okay, that's what I suggest you do for that one. Then they want you to write down the equation of the inverse of G, which we have actually already done up there. All right, but it's that exponential graph. This is a difficult one. And I want you guys to spend some time thinking about, explain how you will use question 6.1 and or question 6.2 to solve this equation. This is a problem solving question, okay? I will explain it to you tomorrow. But I want you to think about that for a little bit. They ask you how to solve this equation. All right, if you even alive in that, you know the equation. So the hint that I can give you is that. Is finding a point at the intersection of two blocks. So this would be y equals this and y equals this. Right? The point at the intersection of those two. Just see if you can figure that out. If you can't, you can just leave it out. We will discuss it tomorrow. And then I want you to actually write down that solution. So here you must explain how you will find this. So you must actually do it. And then I would like you to do D as well. In D, we have a parabola and a straight line. Okay, so this is something that you would have been able to do last year, but now they are putting in some extra stuff here. G to the negative one, the inverse. Here, for which values of X is G greater than the inverse. All right, so that is some inverse work thing. Okay, so I'll leave C on the board for you now. I'm just going to look through the like this for you. Okay, you can stop working, guys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.